God. Yes. You are welcome in this place. Yes. Spirit yes. of the living God, yes. fall fresh oh. on us. Yes. Thank you for your anointing, yes. God, yes. that makes preaching and teaching easy. Thank yes. you for your anointing that yes. will cause the hearers, oh God, to understand it clearly. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me see what we're going to do here now. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about what makes you tick. All right, right now. Have you ever thought about why you act, think, or respond the way you do? And I have asked a couple of people's, people that question. What, you know, what makes you think? Have you ever thought about why you act the way you do? They said no. You know, I guess that is not something that always has come across your mind. But, it, you know, it has come across mine. I mean, and even my, when God gave me, called me to preach my first sermon, where he took me into the book of Numbers about the, the, how the twelve had went into the promised land to spy it out. And God had already given them the property. But when they got in there, they saw the giants. They saw some difficulties. But 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 the property was good. Nice houses. Fruits was so big, a grape, a bunch of grapes. Had, two men had to carry one bunch of grapes out. Oh, Lord. Because mm -hmm. the land was good, but God said, how did he gave you the land? You see, and then, whenever it got, when they came back to give the report to the congregation, they said, we can't take it because there's a giants in there, and we seem just like grasshoppers to them. Okay, okay. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit says, how do you see yourself? And so I began to write down what the Holy Spirit, that's my first, first sermon. So, I'm, you know, God has been leading me in that type of vein. Okay. Some people, you know, might think it might be a little psychology. You know, but what makes you tick? See, maybe we have not even thought about why I act the way I do. Or then have you ever thought why do he, she, they act like they do? Okay. You see that? Uh, Y'all be good with that, right? Mm -hmm. Why does she act like that? Why did he act like that? Why do they act like that? Okay, so let, let's, let me tell you a little bit about personality. All of us have a personality. Do you know that, right? Mm -hmm. You got a personality. You got a personality. Okay, it is suggested that heredity and environment interact to, de to, to determine one's personality. There are no good personalities or bad personalities. Because when we were born, we got we were, who we were born to, our mother and our father that brought us into the world, that's genetically. Mm -hmm. So we we were uh, uh, took on their genetics. So then we come into 
the world. And then our environment. Say the environment that you were born in. Mm -hmm. As a little baby, you were taking in all that went around you. And as you grew up and you heard mm -hmm. mother and father talking, what they were saying, what you were looking at on TV, mm -hmm. that got in to interact with you. You forming your personality then. Okay, okay. Your personality is being formed. They say by the age of, I think it's seven, you already formed a personality by not only your genetics, but by your environment. How you perceive yourself, how you, how, you see, all that stuff you was taking in, it helps you. That's how you uh, make decisions by what you know. That's how you talk to people about how you know. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's how you process things through that mind grid that was in, in born in you through your uh, genetic uh, and your environment. You got me so far? Mm -hmm. See, personality is the characteristics, pattern of thought, the feelings, and behavior that makes a person unique. See, every one of us in here are unique. Do you know that? And see, I, we've got to begin to know ourselves. What, see, this, and, and then let me tell you what James says. Chapter 4, verse 1. What is causing quarrels and fights among you? See, back in the early church, mm -hmm. you know, People have been people ever since people come on the planet. Mm -hmm. Especially after Adam and Eve sinned. Mm -hmm. Then that sin nature come on us. Mm -hmm. And then what we were raised up in as we teenagers how we, what somebody said about us, we internalize that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so why is it so much Bickering and quarreling and fussing and fighting among the people of God. Mm, mm, mm. You see what I'm saying? So now here's what James said it is because of. It comes from the evil desires that's at war within you. It comes, see, it comes from you, what's in you. I don't like him. I don't like her. But see, this is where we got to learn that we are all different. See, we, got, we don't take in that part that we're different. We're all different. Mm -hmm. We come from different parents. We were raised different. And see, that doesn't make you in a, any better than them, and it doesn't make them any better than you. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Amen. Right now. We, we, we were raised different. You, you got somebody else might. Okay, here's one that me and my husband go back and forth with. (laughs) 
Sometimes when I'm cooking, I know what I'm doing. I done got my timer straight. I know when I need to go back and turn it over and this, that, and other. So I might go and sit down. Mm -hmm. I ain't never. What kind of world are you cooking sitting now? I, I, you know, you're going to stand right there over that stove until it's finished. See, that's what he was taught. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now he expect, he think what I'm doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Because this is just the way he was raised. Right, right. Well, see, I got my stuff all figured out, but he don't know that. All right, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I know what I'm cooking. I know I got it on the stove. Okay, okay. So I know I got my timer on it, and I know, and I took my timing in my head. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. But no, so we done had more disagreements <laughs> on that standing on the pot right there to the <laughs> she stand right there to the finished cooking. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then you have to out. That's that old hollow spring mess. <laughs> <laughs> I won't raise like that. I won't raise like that. 
And then you think, just because you won't raise like them, you better than them. That's no, you not. That's right. You ain't no better than them. That's right. Exactly. So this is, you got Jesus in you now, so you need to learn how to understand that they were not raised like you. They didn't come up in the same environment that you did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're the bigger person. See, misunderstandings, they lead to the clashes. And these, like I said, they hinder our effectiveness as mates. It hinders our effectiveness as parents. You see what I'm saying? So you got to realize that when you're trying to parent somebody, you got to realize where you come from, what you did, how did you do it? You know, we don't tell them right for wrong. Say, so don't do what the same make the same mistake I made. Mm -hmm. But you got to learn how to talk to that individual because right. you know that he he had he or she has their own little personality. Mm -hmm. And where did they get that little personality from? They got some from me and some from their dad right. and some who, and, and then their environment or who, that all got in the mix in them. Mm -hmm. So you got to, see, we, it's, we got to have an understanding, a understanding of who we are, what makes us up, what makes us different so that we can learn how to get along with people. Amen. Amen. It affects our differences with Christians, our effectiveness. What well, we don't understand. Do you know what I'm saying? None of us a year were born and raised in the same house and environment. We got all different little, and see, as a pastor, baby, you got to you have to learn how to deal with all these different temperaments. And I've learned too. You just can't assume. I can't, I can't assume that what I say to you, you're not going to get offended by. I can't assume that no more. So therefore, I got to realize that you are different. So then, Holy Spirit had to tell me how to deal with you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right now. Being honest about our behavior begins with understanding the truth about ourselves. We got to. So sometimes we think we all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> See, but you don't know. You know better than the next one. The next one. Right. And you don't come I wouldn't do such a thing. You might not do that, but you do something else that's as bad. Well. Our personalities are simply instruments in the hands of God. God never intended us to use our personalities as excuses to do wrong. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's just the way I am. Mm. That's just the way I do things. Mm. That's just, <laughs> yeah. That's just me. Mm, 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 mm. You a Christian and that's just ye? Okay. That's your, you. That's your. He don't want you to use your personality to do wrong. That you see what I'm saying? That's right. Get out of that saints of God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, just me. It's just how I act. It's just how I do. No. What kind of effective role model you gonna be? Okay. And call yourself a child of the Most High. Okay, all right. See, instead, God expects us to control our personalities to glorify him. Okay. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory up in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, people are unaware of who they are and what they do often damages relationships with other people. 
See, the way to change that is to look at yourself through the mirror of God's word. See, in order to get along with others, you must know yourself. Human nature seems to endow people with the ability to size up everybody in the world but themselves. Size up everybody. Don't look at yourself now. See, James said that's where, that's where the conflict comes in at. In you. The enemy in me. Yeah, that's just that's just the way you were raised, this way you were brought up. But look the thing about this right here. They won't raise like that. So you was a Christian now, so what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to temper myself uh, 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 with the word of God. I'm supposed to glorify God in it. How I answer them, how I handle them, how I deal with them. You see. So we need you we need to look at look in the mirror at our own self. Mm, that's right. Take a good look at All yourself. Right now. <laughs> oh sorry, one day. <laughs> self awareness. What is self awareness? How well do you know your own self? How well do you know yourself? Take a ask, see, during this pandemic, we have we should have been in this quiet time that we have so asking God to show us, show me myself. Show me some things about me. Show me. Why am I having such a hard time with X, Y, Z? Show me me, Lord. Show me me. I remember whenever I first got saved, and uh, my husband back then, he was doing this and that, uh, and I would get on my knees inside the bed, Lord, do such 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 a thing to such such a one. What he doing? Look at what he doing. What he that and that up. God said, "Look at yourself." What he tells me every time. Uh, look at yourself. You fix for me. Okay. I'll take care of him. That's right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You fix for a ring. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of him. Oh, God, he done took my car. He's going to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> my car, my car that I, that I work for, God, my car. Hmm. Lord have mercy. Being honest about our behavior begins with understanding the truth about ourselves. And then we, have, we talk about self-awareness. How well do you know yourself? What's your self-image? If you are not comfortable with yourself, you can't be comfortable with others. That's right. That's, That's true. Right. That's right. Your self-image of yourself uh, uh, restrict, restricts your ability to build healthy relationships. How you see yourself. The first person I must change is who? Myself. We gotta take, we need to, if you don't get nothing else I said today, you need to take a good look at yourself. That's right. Stop blaming others. Let's look at ourselves and do the hard work of resolving the issues that are causing us problems. If you want to have better relationships with others, then stop. Look in the mirror of God's word and start. Start obeying the word. Right. Stop, right. Start doing what the word of God says on how to uh, uh, how to work with this individual? How do I see this individual? How, you know, what do I need to say or do? Because the Bible tells us we need to walk in love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, and, and I don't want you to get it mixed up here. You want to, you want to uh, show G God, show Jesus hand on you everywhere you go in everything you do. And see, you're going to have people that's going to make you mad. Do you hear what I'm saying up in here? Uh -huh. uh -huh. You're going to have people that's going to stir you up. You're going to feel something rising up on the inside of you. I don't know where any of y'all feel that I'm sick. Whenever I can feel myself on the inside, yeah. get mad. Mm -hmm. Oh God! You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But see, I've learned how to not let that volcano erupt. Okay, okay. I got to learn how to do that. Lord have mercy. See, you got to work on yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Mm -hmm. See, now, the first, you know, when you first start off, baby, Christian, first start off, sometimes it's going to broke right on out before you have time. Mm -hmm. But see, that's where you get good teaching and learn. I want right. to just like Jesus. That's right. Then after a while, it, it, you, you learn how to walk away. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And Jesus said, when he was hanging on that cross, and they were spitting on him, talking about him, everything. What did he say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, they did. Yes, he did. So this way I did. That's the way I say sometimes. Father, forgive. Because he don't know what he's doing. He don't know. So we got to learn how to do that. What would Jesus do? All right now. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What would Jesus do? And that's what he did. Father, forgive them. For they know they don't know what they are doing. I've said that more times than I will. You see what I'm saying? So you get you, you got to get there. See, you got to get there, saints of God. See, you got to get there. That way, if you get there. You got to get there. Because, see, this is why we have so many church hurts and church falling out and splits. You know what I'm saying? Because of the clashes. Amen. 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 In the church. And, and Paul and, and, and James tell us where they store. Yeah. yeah. The Bible tells us where did all this stuff come out of your heart, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, what makes you tick? Now, I want you guys to think about that, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about this teaching. And another thing that you guys, uh, uh, you know, what I'm thinking about, sometimes if you sit here and you hear this message, you don't go back at the, to the YouTube channel and just do it again. That's what I think. But we should. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We should because... You sit here that right now, you're not catching everything I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it may be something that you didn't catch if you look at it again. Amen. Because, see, God would not give me these messages for you if he didn't mean for them to change you. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying up in here? Yes. Because, like I said, we're not in here just for show. Mm -hmm. See, God called me... <coughs> To teach you. Amen? Amen. So this is what I'm trying to endeavor to do, even though I thank God for all of you guys that's come out, that made your way out through this pandemic. We're still being safe. No evil shall befall us, neither in the plague come to our, our dwelling. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for this word. So now, what makes you tick? Think about it. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we just give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you, God, for this word that fell on good ground, good soil, Father. Yes. We bless you right now.